Super Mario 3D Land. The first addition to Mario's 3D adventures. Wait, that's, that's, that's Mario 64. Mario's first adventure in 3D puzzles. That's also not true. That's Super Mario Galaxy. <sighs> Run it back. You know what? It's actually just Mario's game of all time. As it may have not been the most adventurous game initially, it's definitely one of the most ambitious journeys of Mario's ever been on. And this defines my childhood as I was lucky enough to receive this from my birthday in 2011, baby. My cousins and I got that John during that holiday season, which was amazing. Adding this new game to my arsenal, I could have it for road trips, during school, any activity that I really wanted. One of my most fond memories was playing this game and being at World 7. I actually was racing my cousin at the time, and we were trying to see who can beat the game the fastest. It's funny because like we were also at his dad's basketball game, and also even funnier because he'd be playing for him like years later. It was... I don't know, it, you gotta have fun off the court, you know? The charm this game had was like no other, mainly because of the power-ups, baby. I don't know what brought to this point to bring back the Snooki suit. They were like having a conversation like, hey man, we should we should bring back that one that one furry suit that was that was in um, Super Mario 3. 3, um, 3. Yeah, it was, wasn't that pretty fun? Yeah, let's, well, let's see why not, let's go for it. And I love this intent, bringing back like, old power-ups and making them and rebuilding them. It just kind of sucked that I sucked at video games. It's funny because my mom told me I, I I would cry all the time. I would lose. Not not at that age, just when I was younger. Did you did you cry too? And I go further on that item. I want to say thank you Nintendo for bringing this back for real. The amount of times I used this item to enjoy exp exploration, it was crazy. With a game like Mario Galaxy, I felt like I truly could explore. I felt like it said, hey, it felt you had free roaming, but it just slapped on in a very linear game. I don't know. That's just me though. And in Mario Sunshine, I felt exploration constantly felt like a waste of time. Really, I don't like comparing these games because this is a, such a simplistic game in comparison to those very ambitious titles, but I gotta be real with you. But again, as a 12 year old, I was a casual gamer. I wasn't great, I surely wasn't good. So it was strange for you to expect me to beat these games with ease. Now I think it's best to talk about my most memorable parts of the game, especially the levels. The game actually expressed really early on that you should use the camera, as if you use the camera more, you actually can find these coin stars tucked away in some fun hidden places. One Dash Tree was one of the best levels as the moving platforms were a fun idea and it's really cool to see how they mashed it through future levels. World 2 is actually great because it always gets you a good job of testing your capabilities and skills you've learned at this point. A young player like me was trying to catch the vibe and of course I would always fall down from the sky in those red blue switching platform sections. Memorization wasn't my best, I'll admit it, but after playing these games so many times it felt like way easier. I, I became way better at it later in Super Mario 3D World. Easy one of the most unique stages in the game is 5-2, which is a huge callback and a huge reference to the Zelda. Shout out to all you Zelda fans out there. You probably are on a top-down view throughout the most of the level, trying to solve the puzzles, and when the doors open, you actually hear the cool little jingle from the Legend of Zelda games. Like that one, yeah, that one's pretty cool. It gives you more of a dynamic idea of what this game has to offer, and also how to use the camera to its fullest capacity. Speaking of camera, you actually play around a lot of the camera to see certain secrets throughout these levels. I know I keep saying the word ambitious, but this really was because a lot of games don't focus on the level design itself, more of the theme. Like for example, in World 8, you have a lava theme. You're gonna see lava, fireballs, and everything throughout the level. In this game, it goes back to the same green area on 8-2, which is, <laughs> it's smart, it's strong, I like this. And man, I hate to speak of how fun the final level of the game is. In 8 Dash Castle slash Bowser, it's easily a wonderful adventure to go get Bowser. The hard road of dodging magma monsters, pillars, and lava all feels tense and really puts a, a, a bone chill to me. It's funny because I was playing this game like in the car, <laughs> so I, I felt like a lot more tense when playing this because I felt like if I screamed my parents here, they'd probably hit me. And after biting Bowser and going through all of that, I kind of got the peach, my sweet old peach. And then basically it was like, psych, I tricked you. I got pulled a prank and it's, it's funny because I don't know how younger me got so shook about this. And in the true final level, <laughs> bro, I was stressed out of my mind. You start off the level in a spine roller coaster. That's how you already know it's already good in the middle. You are nearly avoiding fireballs and other obstacles throughout it. I'm playing this in the car, I feel like I was moving my camera around a lot just to try and see if anything was coming both ways. The camera didn't work like that. I don't know why I thought it was. It's probably just the 3D aspect of the game. And after going through a pretty extensive part of the game where you had pretty much no save points and you had to indulge in this long platforming battle it didn't even feel like a, a real fight i feel like you were just trying to get to the princess while winning bowser's shenanigans fireballs whatever he was throwing at you at the time 
And when I mean all these shenanigans, I mean, he, he, this man was truly in his bag. He was going ham on this. Bro was relentlessly trying to kill you. You don't see that in current games. I don't I don't think Bowser's had this much hatred to to you in, in such a long time. You get on this long stretch. It's most like a, like, a, like a Mario Party mini game where you're jumping over all of these obstacles. You manage through all these loops and bricks and these obstacles. You get to the finale of saving Princess Peach. Man, what a great time. I felt I felt tense just even like reading the script for this. And normally you'd think this game be over or you'd have to have like one world where it's just a bonus world. But wrong, this game is twice as long as you really think it is. You have a special world for every single world you've faced against so far. Each one either has a remix of a previous stage or its own course. You can literally put the regular worlds and the special worlds side by side and see their counterparts and how they differ just a little bit. And when you get to the point of World 8, you are probably expecting some fiery doom, something even more sinister than what, what World 8 originally had. But instead, you're met with a celebration. Man, I can't help but love this tune for a, a last final world. It truly felt like it. It truly felt like the end of a passionate project, a passion game. So, for one, I appreciate you for watching this, and I appreciate this game for even being made. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you, mom and dad. Appreciate it. You guys, you guys, are best birthdays are awesome. <sighs> Nintendo man, they're, they're good and bad at the same time, all the time.